A suicide jet there again. <laughs> I should say, I'm sorry, I thought it was on the whole time. <laughs> well, now we're warmed up. We know where we're going to film that, right? Sunset coming. Go ahead.
basic things, because I think that's all I can really successfully do with you today. I can show you different ways of doing this movement, but we'd be spending hours on it. It took me a year to do that movement, with Weiji Sensei standing over me and, and helping me. Uh, so you're not ready really to get into this mm -hmm. Sensei movement. Uh, say song, you're ready to do it, but there's a lot of technical mistakes. Uh, just simple things, of timing here. If I'm moving into something, would I want to do this? You know, and you're the opponent. My hand's here. Okay. In movements like in, and this is for the future. You don't want your arms way out here. You're protecting this area of your body. All right. From here, you're breaking, breaking. Simple circle. Who knows? All this is not your position. Everything you do, everything you do relates to this arm angle. So if I'm if I'm doing a movement and I'm doing something complicated like like this movement in Kanchen or Sansei Ru, all right, where are my arms supposed to be? Your arms were all over the place because you had no template, no frame of reference. But if coming in here, watch. If I take my hand, move it to Sanchen. See where it is? Everything relates to Sanchen. Uh, if you stand here and front foot to uh, your left foot forward, left foot forward, my left foot is forward. Okay, now I want you to keep this spot here when I say go. And I'm going to keep this spot right here same time. Ready? Go. Go oh, front kick. Front kick. Oh, this one. Yeah. Ready? Go. Okay. All right. All of a sudden, you changed the technique when it became a contest. When you did the kata, your leg went way back here and then up. The front kick in Weiji is a, I call it a get your attention kick. Yeah. So if I'm standing here and I go, the leg goes up like this, right? Not like that. Most people, when I do that with them, their leg is here, and I'm already hitting them, right? Because it, you know, just and, common and, sense. And that's a trainer for the fact that we go from back side to side like this, and then we'll pick up our feet and try to get our touch. Eventually, be loose enough to touch your heel to your ass, and then when the kick comes up, your your leg and your ass muscles are together. Get more power on it. It's more power for a back kick, but for a front kick, right. you can speak. Right. It's getting your attention. So that kick, wherever I, my foot happens to be, <coughs> the leg just comes up like that. Right. All right, it's boom! And it's amazing how powerful that kick can be with training. But this is something that even in sport karate, they don't recognize it as being powerful enough, when in fact it really is. Right. But again, most, most people don't train that way, they're always kicking off that rear leg. Uh, front kick, all front kicks in Weiji, you just lift that leg and get it up. Rear kicks, that's like a whip-like action. Alright, that can be more powerful. Front kick, you want to get it in. Circle blocks, you want to work on using your whole body for the circle. And this arm comes inward as you do the block. It's a check block, and it's using tools that you're going to use for fighting. But here, one, and then around, and then the arm comes back here, and out, thumb, and line the forearm. The thumbs were way out. Not a big deal, but when your hand is flat, the thumb is in this position. When your palm curls up, then you're hitting with that thumb position. Right. Sanchen, this is fine. Just the thumb should be here. Why don't you want it out here? It'll catch on something and break your thumb. Not a good habit in the end. Angles, the angle of your Sanchen, which is everything that you, any kind of stance that you use, the angle of your leg should be in the, in the same angle as your foot. That end. Your foot should not be turned out more than one heel width. So that means from here to here is 
is one heel. Anything more, and you put a strain on your knee and your hip. And you don't want to be hit when your foot is in this position. All right, right here, your foot is straight. Why? Because your hips and shoulders are square and wage you were frontal fighting, frontal fighting system. All right. The moment the heel is here and you're trying to twist your body to fight straight, you're putting strain on the hip, on the knee. So that's why the Sanjin stance looks like this. Something that, that's very, very easy to replicate. But if you do it wrong, and I see a lot of people telling their students, well, you don't want to take a kick here, so push your knees in. And I see them doing Sanjin like that. They're, they're candidates for knee surgery, hip surgery in 10, 15 years. Mm -hmm. And I can predict that. All right. But if you're doing your sanction correctly, uh, I've been doing it for, oh God, for forever. And I have no knee, no hip problems. But I do it correctly. I make sure. Now, no matter what the stance is, no matter where you are, you use your sanction. You use your sanction in fighting. And uh, I didn't get a chance to show that. Throw a punch. In. Okay. This comes right out of the Wawoki. Alright, it's like catching a ball. I think I explained that to you, but not on camera. But, but when someone throws a punch at me, no matter where my hands are, this hand comes up like it's catching a ball. That's the check block. And the other arm will pick it up and carry it over to the center line of the opponent. It goes right out of the side check. You have to master San Chen. That's why in China, Kang Wen Weiji spent three years doing San Chen. Nobody understands this. The teachers today, you know, they spent uh, three months with me, six months with me, and they're all, you know, away. And next thing I know, they got a dojo. And they don't never come back for instruction. And then they, they wonder why their students are having problems. But because they're doing San Chen like a ritual. I don't know if you were an altar boy when you were growing up. I was an altar boy. And we had all these rituals, speaking Latin. I knew all the phrases, but I didn't know what they meant. I did all the rituals, but I didn't know what they meant. Same principle here. You're doing ritual karate. <laughs> you know? And then you're going to try to fight out of that. No way. No way. You have to understand your sanction. The, word, the phrase, everything's in sanction, is very meaningful. And if it's without it, you'll, you'll always have trouble. But if you can master your San Chen, if you can remember all these things I told you about your shoulder movement, your shoulders should move, your body moves slightly. Every punch, everything starts with the body. When Bobby Campbell was giving you that seminar on the six inch punch, how do you think he generated the power? On the floor? On the hips. floor, of course. Like, yeah. it, it, you see, it was like this, and then it came back. You could see the nine on his, on his thing was incredible. That's all I could tell I remember. And then the force behind was crazy. It was but it all came from Sancha. Mm -hmm. And that's what you have to understand. There's no magic there. It's just using the power of your body. And you develop that through your Sancha. Do you have any other questions? Are there any questions that uh, can help you with? Um, I'd like to buy your book. Well, we're going to go over to my house yeah, and have a cup of tea and... Uh, yeah, the um, six points of the block. Um, That's Darren Yee's... One, yeah. one, two, three, and this one. Six points of the block. One, two, three, and this one. What I'm going to do is I'll send you a clip on Darren Yee's... I think, I don't know how many points are there. Uh, it might be seven. six or eight. Yeah, and the light is a lot guy. But you don't do your block thinking of those things. Right. See, okay. that's that's the mistake. Otherwise, can you imagine doing <laughs> like a robot? Yeah. But what he's trying to show you is that it all comes from your Wawoki. But you don't train all of them seeing those different punches coming at you while you're doing the circle block. It's a very simple movement. But it's all in compensating. But when someone throws a punch, throw a punch, throw a punch. It's whatever part of the circle that I need. Okay. I mean, I mean, it's so wild that you're 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 really in a zone from yeah. here to here. Yeah, you know, you're not doing this big 
goofy. You can't do it. I know. I I lost the all this. See, that's the that's the ritual of it. Right. And then people say, well, I got to do it faster. <laughs> you know, how fast can you do that? I mean, I don't work. You you know this better than me, but I remember in the early '90s when we all were standing going like this. That's a wall drill. No, but I right. And it, it was like, then no. That's what we talk like about. You're going to buy or something, or you're, I can't even remember. I'll say, no, that's it. We don't, we're not, that's all done. That's a trainer. Don't do it. Don't show it. It, 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 was, it was a weight belt drill. So, you know, here, if you're standing here by the wall, this is kind of crazy. You do all of this while I was on Okinawa. Because Tommy Osi and some of the others were blocking like this. You know, it's like cats. Well, they're very effective, but it wasn't Sanchez. So Reiji Sensei drew a circle on the wall, and he had people put their hand here. In order to reach this side of the circle, you had to move your shoulder. And that's what he was teaching you, to keep this block parallel to your body. All right, and then people would say, well, what do we do with this hand? He said, well, just put it over here. Just rest it over here. Okay. All right? That was all it was for, just to help you understand that circle. Right. All right, and you can still use it. But see, that's not the concept. That's just to help you understand right. How that circle block should go. Okay. Now the wall there, I can do it that way. And how about the chat in the back? Is the chat, the the, the the hit, the part of the chat back is. There are in many ways of doing this, as there are teachers. But the way I do it is, wherever my hands happen to be, I can chop simply because I'm using my body. You never do that. All right, this is a Japanese way of doing the shuko. Uh, can you imagine going back to someone and saying, like, I'll like, grab it. Yeah. All right, so if, what you're doing here is I'm using cutting across. That's not a chop, but it's cutting across the karate artery. And we'll take someone out. And you can use that same movement coming across from the head, anywhere. Using this is even more effective mm -hmm. than this. So there's a million applications. It's like trying to, s s to have eight, uh, eight uh, methods of doing you know, the circle block. All right, I can come up with 25 ways of using that movement. But the idea is when I'm doing kata, I come from here and up and like that. That's the basic way of doing it. But from here, at any point, my hand could be, and I could even from here. Use that technique. And, and how so, the, the back fist part, but the, the, the idea of curving the wrist a little bit um, when you're doing this for the punch. You can if you want to. I would. Okay, how would you do it? Regular. Back right, that's the strongest part of your wrist. Yeah. Okay. Right. Yeah. right, the ball. Yeah, no, I would agree. And, and the energy is not parallel, it's more coming up. So therefore, you want the power. Is your wrist stiff or loose? You know, is it, is it, is it? So you're asking the questions like, how hard are you doing San Chen? No, no, I'm just wondering in, in, in hold your hand up. But it, just, all right, no, well, when I'm doing that, how hard, I don't know, it's it just, right. It, it, what I'm doing is I'm accelerating using the extensor muscles. The tensor, the, the antagonistic muscles are relaxed. The moment I make contact, both come together. That's the focus, the kidney. Mm -hmm. So what will happen is you develop that by doing your sun chen. Now how hard is your sun chen? How fast is your sun chen? What I wanted to do today is just to teach you the level one of sun chen. And I would recommend you spend a lot of time just doing that. Learn the softness of sun chen. And the softness of, I'm going through a sun chen, I'm not going to use it. This is soft. No, right? Right? So it's soft. You know, how soft am I? How hard am I? Right. It, it, it's relative. And it's what you, you can play around with that. But what you've got to do is work on your form. Work on the bones of your, your movement, the, the, the template, the, the mechanism that makes your sanchen all effective. And I'll do that with one more sanchen for you. Try to understand. And I'm going to do it it's very slow and soft. Right? But the movements are the same 
whether I'm doing them fast or slow, there is slight acceleration in every movement. You must have the acceleration. That teaches you whenever you punch, the movement is faster at the end than it is at the beginning or in the middle of the movement. And your stance changes with time. In the beginning, the white belts are a little bit deeper because they're, they don't have the balance. As you get more familiar, comfortable with it, it's smaller. Eventually, shoulder width. But whatever it is, you have 100% confidence in that movement. This is the simplified version of the Wauki. Again, moving into the movement. I'm always attacking. Okay. Nice. Thank you. Thank you, Tim, for helping. You're welcome.